hey guys so um i just quickly want to drop this here please there is something i notice a lot of people still don't understand remember a few weeks back i brought a video here explaining to you people that admissions in canada is highly competitive as as this year and the more we move into the years ahead like 2024 things will still be the same like very competitive now lately a lot of people are not checking i know most of us we are not checking but i'm going to explain something here if you apply to mbcc or if you are still to apply then you should know that now mbcc is taking 14 to 16 weeks 14 to 16 weeks that should be how many months one week is four one month is four weeks another one month four weeks that should be four months straight up that's to tell you that MBCC would take four months to send you an offer letter if you qualify. All right. Then going to the other school in Nova Scotia, I always talk about NSCC. NSCC would take at least three to four months. Now they are saying that they have to be issuing, um, they will be giving admission letters from January. Now, and you, I believe most of us, we have heard the news where IRCC the schools will be sending the admission letters. I don't know if schools will be sending or how is the verification going to be done. And IRCC will be very fine to know if they are actually legit offer letters. That is to tell you that just the offer letter to come to you before you start your application, your visa application, is going to take you at least four and a half to five months. Now, why am I making this video? I'm making this video so as to let you know something. A lot of us, we are not seeing. Yes, it is normal that you are going to start studies by probably um, September next year, right? Okay, let's assume that as of this point, you are watching this video, you have not done any application to any school. Let's assume that maybe you want to apply by January against September, right? Excellent. Then you, before you start the application, the tendency is that one, most of these schools, these cheaper schools will be closed. That is the fact. The schools that you could pay maybe $13,000, $14,000 would be closed. Maybe twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars They will be closed. And now you'll be left with nothing to apply to those that are 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, even 18 or 19,000 Canadian dollars. Now, when you apply to those expensive schools during your visa application, your money, your proof of funds has to increase as your tuition fee is increasing. That is point number one you should note. Secondly, when you go to apply for this visa, other students would have applied for these visas already. I do not know the method IRCC is going to use or they are using to process visa. Someone was telling me it's artificial intelligence, but I don't think so. Someone was saying that they don't look at the files like individually, but I don't think so. I'm not very sure of what the person was saying even if they are using artificial intelligence i believe that robots do not go they will not be able to skip one application to the next so definitely they will be going in order now if you apply for your admissions by january let's assume that maybe you get the offer by march april before you go for visa application in april now and according to IRCC, visa application takes two months three months it will be june july august you see you are already in august now, assuming that you don't get the visa and you intend to reapply again, you are already in August. Do you now see, and your program is starting in September, you will now see that if you want to reapply again, it is going to take a lot of time and a lot of resources and probably maybe you will not get your visa on time. So the main reason I'm talking about this is time is essence in the Canada journey as I speak to you. A lot of people want to move. A lot. I am talking to people i know what i'm talking about a lot of people want to move so you have to be smart and again talking about proof of funds guys if you go and you do your bank statement and you are telling the visa officer that your father is working your mother is working and they are then they are earning money they are earning a million francs per month out of a sudden the account is showing 1.8 1.6 600 800 1.5 2 million 3 million and you apply for your visa without explaining where this money is coming from that is a problem you will not get the visa 
IRCC is trying to fight money laundering. They are trying to fight illegal activities. So if you are telling them that there is money in your account, that is lump sum. You have to make sure that your bank statement does not show lump sum. Even if it shows lump sum, okay, it's not a problem. It's your bank statement, right? Excellent. How did you get the money? Where is the money coming from? If you are telling IRCC that you earn 500k a month, or maybe you earn 1.2 million a month, and out of a sudden, within that a month, you are doing two deposits with 1.5, 1 million. It is practically impossible. You cannot be getting that money from your job site, right? Because technically, you are earning 1.2, but two times within one month, you put a deposit of almost close to 2.5 million. How did you get that money? If you do not explain this, you are not going to get the study visa to Canada. I'm just telling you now so that you start preparing yourself on what to do. It is essence. Time is very important and it's important for you to start putting these things into consideration. I have a lot of videos on this channel explaining all these things to you. Now, another thing I want you to understand is that most people, they go to Canada, they don't understand that PR is of essence. Everybody that studies in Canada, if you want to stay first, you have to get postgraduate work permit one year or two years. Then you work for some time. Then you gain work experience, then you apply for PR. Now, if you do not go to a city where you can easily get PR and you are 40 years and above, what are you going to do? Remember, to be selected for PR application, you there is age limit and there are a lot of other factors. And age is one of those reasons. Now, if your age is somehow maybe 43 by the time you finish school, and you are not in a province that if you apply for PR, you are going to be selected as fast as possible. What are you going to do? You have to apply to a province that even if the worst come to the worst, you can get a provincial nomination. This is how smart people operate right because if you get a provincial nomination no matter what the province is going to accept you and that is how you get your pr so the essence of this particular part i'm talking about now is i have always said that if you want to study in canada and you are 40 years at least 35 and above try to target the atlantic canada one you can target schools in Alberta. Also, you can target schools in Saskatchewan, schools in Manitoba, schools in New Brunswick, schools in British Columbia, schools in Nova Scotia. The thing that you can get schools in Ontario is not a problem. But the thing is, Ontario is too crowded. Okay, the chances of getting PR very fast in Ontario are very slim, especially, like I said, the competition is so high. So you have to be very tactical in these things. Now, also remember, that proof of funds or visa application is not all about proof of funds, right? It's not all about bank statement. Like I explained to you, you need to show backup documents. There is a video I did on my YouTube channel telling you of the essence, the importance of registering your business. If you have a small business, excellent. You register it. I have all those videos on this YouTube channel. And I also have other ways, other techniques. I said, if you are targeting schools in Canada, you could do that. I don't know if I told you if your visa is pending for visa, visitor visa, or if your visitor visa is pending, you could still go for a study visa if you have the resources, but you cannot submit two visitors visa and you cannot submit two study visas. You can have one visitor visa pending and you submit another one, which is the study visa. Or you can have a study visa pending and you submit a visitor visa. But it doesn't make sense if you have a study visa and you're submitting for a visitor visa. I hope you enjoy this. Now, I want to put something here. Just watch this video till the end and see. Hey guys, good morning to everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening to you, depending on where you are watching this video from. So this follower sent me a message. Milton, good morning. If I have a full scholarship, do I still need proof of funds? Okay. If you have a full scholarship, you do not need proof of funds. But if you have a partial scholarship, you need proof of funds. Now, let me break it down. You know, scholarships are things that are, or let's say, is a form of, or a way to tell a student that, or a way in which most organizations or schools help international students to study abroad for free. So if you have a partial scholarship, you will still need um, proof of funds to satisfy the visa officer that you have enough finance to cater for yourself while you study. But in this case, she was asking about full scholarship and you do not need a full scholarship if you, you do not need 
proof of funds if you have a full scholarship now there are cases where i will always advise people to make sure that they have some money in case they are going for full scholarship because when you go to these countries they are not just going to give you the scholarship money at once for example us canada anywhere when you enter a country you have to register in school before you start lectures before if there is any money for maybe living costs accommodation living expensive they are going to give you the money later on but not immediately when you arrive the country so definitely you need to show the visa officer that you have some more money to take care of at least your accommodation or food for some few days or months before this money will be distributed to you examples of such scholarships are erasmus mondos uh, graduate teaching and graduate research assistantships in the u.s and a whole lot of others commonwealth and i think so even the shivening when you enter these countries the uk the u.s america um, canada you are not just going to receive all these monies the first day so definitely you should be at least just show the visa officer that no though i have a full scholarship i have a bank account with this amount of money inside as simple as abc nothing will be complicated again but in all even if you do not show it doesn't still matter but the safety is yours because when you migrate you are not going to get the scholarship or the stipends during the first week or second week it takes times to distribute money to internationals or from organizations i hope you understand me